Uh, thank you very much, Sharon. Thanks for, not, not just for the nice introduction, but what a great job she has done kind of putting all the pieces together for our campaign. She's been a great spokesperson. She's been, she's a, she's been a great partner in this effort, and I'm just very grateful to her. And, uh, and, and it's also, I'm grateful to be part of a Democratic ticket that is so incredibly strong. And you all saw it here tonight. You saw the people that are on the state ticket. I mean, this is one of the strongest teams that, that we've ever seen put together in this state. I mean, you go through the whole list from, from Nina Turner uh, to Connie Pillage, to John Carney, and to David Pepper. It is just an outstanding group of people who are ready to lead Ohio in a different direction. And that's so important. And I do want to say, I do want to add, I, I want to add my congratulations publicly to David Pepper. I love the video of him and his new son, Jack. Now, about 21 years ago, my wife Shannon and I, we also had a son, Jack. We tried to do a video with him yesterday, it just did not work. So, but I do want to, I do want to just recognize my family. You know, the, the families are, uh, they're the unsung heroes, I think, a lot of times in these campaigns. Uh, you know, and, and, and I just really want to pay tribute to them. Um, of course, my, my daughter Bridget, my daughter Colleen, uh, my son, uh, Connor, who unfortunately is taller than me now, as you can all see, uh, my son Jack, and of course, uh, my wife of more than 21 years now, my wife Shane, uh, who has just done a fabulous job uh, putting up with this campaign and getting to know people all over Ohio. Th there's a few things... First, that uh, you know, when I started this campaign, I really started traveling the state uh, more than a year ago. Uh, I did that because I had some real disagreements with John Casey about, about the direction that the state was headed in, and I just really believe, and I, I still do, and I just I feel even more strongly, and I think I can express it even more clearly that the state under John Casey has just been it's just been headed in the wrong direction. And I have a, a, a better understanding, I think, being in all 88 counties and most of the the cities and towns in Ohio now, I have a real understanding of just how Ohio got off track and, and what the ramifications of that have, have been. And I think this is what it comes down to. Here's the most basic question that every public official has to answer. Here's the most basic question. Who do you work for? Every day when you get up, who, whose interests are you serving? Who are you concerned about? And what I've seen happen in Ohio in the last four years is we have a governor who certainly does take stands. He certainly does work. But who is he working for? He's working for this very small group of people who are doing very, very well. And they don't need government to help them, but they're happy to take the benefits of government when it's to their own financial benefit. And that's what's gone off track on, with so many different, so many different issues. When, when you have when you have a governor that that specializes in representing millionaires and billionaires instead of working people, you get the kind of government that we've had in the last four years. Um, and they just don't break right now. And and as as Sharon said, our priority is every day when we get up, we want to make sure that we're representing all the people who really haven't had somebody to speak up for them in the last four years, and there are a lot of them. All of the people, by the way, who have not been included in what John Kasich calls the miracle of Ohio's economy. Now, I, I've gotten into a habit of asking people, as I travel all around the state and all 88 counties, if you agree with John Kasich that the economy in Ohio is a miracle. So I'll ask this audience to say, but just raise your hand if you agree with Governor Kasich that the economy in Ohio is a miracle. I'm not raising my hand and saying yes, by the way. I'm just saying yes. <laughs> but here's a serious question. Here's a more serious question. Raise your hand if you know somebody that's working two or three jobs to try to make it. Raise your hand if you know somebody uh, that's trying to survive on minimum wage. Raise your hand if you know somebody, uh, and by the way, it's 50% of Ohio, who's living paycheck to paycheck. You see, the thing is, if you know real Ohioans, if you know real Ohioans, you know people like that. Or maybe you are one of those people. 
And if you have a governor that feels like the economy is a miracle, what it means is he's completely cut off from the reality of how most of those people live. And if there's one thing that all of us believe is the mission of government, it's to make sure that we speak up for those people. So that's what you're going to hear Sharon and I doing over the next 181 days. We're going to be speaking up for people who have been ignored, who haven't been listened to, and nobody's been speaking up for them in the governor's office in the last four years. Those are the people we're going to be speaking up for. So if you're one of those 50% that's living paycheck to paycheck, we're going to be speaking for you. If you're one of the people that's trying to make it on minimum wage, we're going to be speaking up for you. If you're one of the public workers who Governor Kasich tried to take your rights away through Senate Bill 5 and didn't honor your service to the public, we spoke up for you during this fight over Senate Bill 5, and we're going to continue to speak up for you. If you're one of those seniors whose sales taxes went up and maybe had your homestead exemption taken away, we're going to be speaking up for you too. If you're one of the police officers or firefighters or other public safety workers whose work was not respected and honored, we're going to be speaking up for you too. If you're a worker at a place like Ormet, where last August you had a thousand people get laid off and they collected thousands of signatures and just asked the governor for the basic decency to meet with them and talk with them like I did earlier today for the third time when the governor has refused to do it once. If you're one of those people who have been seen as disposable by this administration, we're going to be speaking up for you too. If you're one of the teachers who, instead of having their service honored and supported, have been blamed and had their funding cut, we're going to be speaking up, not just for you, but for the children that you try to educate on a daily basis. So for everybody here, it's not just do we disagree with the policies of the last four years. Yes, of course we do. But it's more than that, because we need to start speaking up for those people that haven't had a voice in the last four years. And yes, we're going to criticize Governor Kasich, because he deserves it and because the people, as Chris Redford said, need to learn the truth about what's happened in this state. But we're also going to be articulating a vision of Ohio, what Ohio can be. Not just what it shouldn't be, but also what it can be. And let me just leave you with this thought. Wouldn't it be a great thing if we could talk to people from other states, instead of asking us, wow, what, what is going on in Ohio with restricting women's health care? and trying to restrict union rights, and trying to make it tougher to vote, and cutting K-12 through education. What about, instead of having those, Ohio known for those things, what if people, as you talk to them across the rest of the country, said, wow, it's amazing what is actually getting done in Ohio. It's amazing what you're doing. You're actually expanding voting rights. You're protecting uh, the right to vote. You're actually protecting women's rights. You're actually honoring the teaching profession and actually funding it adequately. Maybe you become the best state in the country for universal pre-kindergarten. Those are the kind of things, not just stopping the negative things that have happened in the last four years, but those are the kind of positive things that will, will really help Ohio become the state that I know that it could be. Now, I always believed it could be that kind of state, but I've seen it in the last year. Because the good news is, as bad as this administration has been, and it's been bad, as bad as this administration has been, the people of Ohio themselves are better. They're better than this administration, they're stronger than this administration, and they deserve something better from their governor. And in 181 days,